That's true. You know, we don't really see the Ench in the core role anymore. You know, I feel like it's kind of completely died off since they made the switch around so you don't get your untouchable until 6 now. You there? There's still some teams that do it every now and then, but yeah, it's not, it's not done as often at all. What's What's funny is like uh, when when Insania used to play on kind of teams that are similar to my level, and it's the same team, just long time ago. It's the same this liquid stack, but long time ago. He used to ban Enchantress versus us every single game. <laughs> just, just to I ban out my Enchantress. I talking about this. Yeah. Like, yeah, I regularly, whenever we'd hop in lobby, like, Lizzie, big fan, love your Enchantress, also hate it. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I would uh, abuse it versus him on the offlane, and then he yep. would have these PTSDs and just ban it versus <laughs> us. <laughs> Even though I wouldn't play it because I'm not playing that role, but... In any case, I I love that guy, man. I don't know why, but he's such, such a dear, dear dear person to me. It's it's um, I don't I, it's it's not like we talk a lot or that he's my close friend or something. It's just that I like him. That's you just all. have fond memories, right? Like I never really yeah. feel like I've heard bad things about Insania, whether it's your pub experience, whether you've seen him on camera or anything else. You know? but yeah, that, that's like that's that. actually that's what you, that's what it is about. It's about the pub experience. So when he came into Dota, I was actually playing for somewhat solid teams. Let's say we would be able to take games off of tier one teams. And he came completely out of haunt. He was still haunt trash. And he would get in a pub with me, just pick bounty hunter every game and narrate every <laughs> fucking thing he does. He would be like, <laughs> okay, I'm about to shuriken toss this guy, then track that guy. He's very eloquent as well. So it, it sounded much better better than i'm depicting it but yeah uh, he was really nice about it but detailed like is there anyone in this lobby that you've had that experience with is there anyone of these players that's maybe you like okay shut up but in a good way you just tell me everything i don't need to know no nah, no nah, i i had nico baby muted for the longest of times <laughs> and um, then like oh great and... he's a pro player a bit unmute him to see if he's better and no one no one would flame me whenever i'd match up mid against him because i would have five cs when he has like 25 you know? <laughs> and then i'd still win because i'm abusing some visage or something so i deserve the flames not as do you see the camera please uh hold on okay, let me move that what's... camera up quickly <laughs> I, I told don't, you, you look, you look like some sort of weird heaven scene, right? I was going to, like, have a heart play. Let's get back in the draw. I mean, speaking of yep. people who are abusing heroes, which is very potent right now, we did just see Viper picked up again by mm -hmm. Alliance. And oh, this that. is going to... This should be the Naga mid versus him as well. Yeah. I've seen this a couple of times. I think it should be... Uh, you can't run Void Naga Spirit there, right? You have to run yeah. something else. Yeah, I, I think it's the Naga Siren. I've seen this lane and uh, some players consider it as a direct counter. So we'll see if that works out or not. Because Viper is really scary at the moment. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I still think li you, Limp tweeted out recently. Like he has a 20 win streak in pubs with Viper or something. He just picks oh. it constantly. Oh, that's... that's oh, dirty. Oh, man. I the hero is just way too strong. He's just way too strong. Uh, for pubs, at least, because you tilt the enemy midder because you win the lane hard, and then they just tilt everyone else on their team. It's like a ripple effect. That is true. You know, your pub mid experience usually is him yelling at the rest of the team and why they aren't doing things. Uh, when it comes to VP, this uh, Void Spirit can be played on offlane, I think, most mm -hmm. most probably, and then they'll decide to either put, put Naga mid or safe lane. I think it should be safe lane as well. I, I, I jumped the gun there, there when I said versus Viper. I've seen some teams do it, but most most likely what it is, it's Naga versus the Beastmaster on the lane. The high armor also helps versus the boars. I think it's more you're trying to, like, you're, you're focusing on the fact that even if it's not Naga mid, it can't be Void Spirit mid, right? Like, Void Spirit yeah. gets screwed over by any hero that can has a way of going around his resonant pulse. So that's why, like, I think recently uh, Secret ran anti-mage against the voice group and he done nothing i don't know it looks like alliance they actually are expecting void or naga to be mid because they just banned out the centaur so they're expecting the last pick of versus pro to be actually the offlane hmm. i'm not so sure I, I i'm not so sure how well void spirit does there but i'm certain that he can at least uh, secure that range creep and perhaps play around the high ground well, the, the thing is, you don't know what's in Alliance's safe lane right now. I guess the, the thing for VP 
is there someone they can pick that keeps flexibility? We'll see. Weaver. Okay, that, that could be flexible, right? You could run that really anywhere in the mid, safe lane, off lane. Probably not four, because we should have Grimstroke and Enchantress as supports. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think it should be Grimstroke plus Void Spirit on the off lane. It could be Grimstroke and Weaver as well, definitely. Uh, your Weaver position tree is very popular in the CIS, the one that goes for Aghanims early on. In a game such as this one, getting an early vessel as well would be pretty cool. Depends on what alliance last week as well. We're throw, uh, Naga is good safely and it's decent mid as well, I think, in this game. So they, they can roll her the way they want to. Okay, I... I oh man, it's good versus Spirit and Weaver. This uh, Faceless Void actually is really good versus the Void Spirit and the Weaver, and it looks like Void Spirit will be offlane, yeah. Yep. No, kind mm -hmm. of as we were anticipating then in the end, so no one in the middle, not Naga. And I think we saw Alliance, they kind of had this comparative of Void versus Weaver uh, as the game went on, but they had the Weaver last time. It completely just mm -hmm. outplayed. So there is, there is that kind of outplay potential there where you can bait Faceless Void into bad chronos, but he has a lot to play around here. You mean because of the Aghanims, right? Oh, no, no. I mean, he was genuinely... I think it was Nico Baby was on the Weaver, and he was just juking mm -hmm. out Chronos and dodging them uh -huh. with time-lapse. Yeah, so uh, later on in the game, it's kind of hard to catch the Weaver because of the ulti, right, and the Scucci. But the laning stage can be problematic for the Weaver because of the time, uh, time dilation. Uh, you, If you use Scucci aggressively, and then he time dilates, you're very squishy on a Weaver. Pretty much all you have got going for you is your mobility and your invis. You're stalled. So that lane can be hard, but this should be your Weaver position one on the safe lane. And then the Void Spirit and Grimstroke should be on the off lane together as a combo, which is a solid lane as well. Yes. Yeah, you, you can just run down with the Ink Swirl, you get the stun, and then you have a follow-up stun with the Aether Remnant. So there's a lot of damage potential. Of course, you, you want to spread it out, right? If you try and burst, you're not going to kill the Void early because they'll just time walk it off. I'm just interested in seeing what ILTW is going to go for um, on this Weaver, what his build is going to be like. I, I would really like to see something that allows him to be active very early on. A couple of Raid Bands, maybe an Urn, you know? Maybe the same build that you would have on an offline Weaver plus a Maelstrom, something like that. That Getting a... Uh, Stop watching getting yourself. A, right, they can't see you anymore. I just, I, I just had the way, like I'm a bride to be wed. Uh, just getting an agonim on Weaver would be pretty cool as well. But you're a position one Weaver, so yeah. Uh, we we, we sure saw the, the impact way. of like uh, the, how risky it can be to have this kind of one core from the mid, right? When we saw Bait do that, you when they had a Void Spirit one yesterday, and he started. Yeah, but this is different. The, the, this is different though, because your mid lane isn't a T8; it's a Naga, and Naga's carry potential is Infinite. arguably much higher. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I expect taken. him to probably just go for your kind of standard build into the right clicks and just don't get chrono lol. We'll see how it actually uh, continues. And we, we, were, we were actually correct about the Naga mid as well, so it will be no one playing that uh, Naga Siren on the mid lane versus Viper. I have heard a lot of um, players, tier 1 players, say that this is heavily favored uh, for Naga. That yeah, you can you win this lane spell, right? Easily. That's the, that's you, the can big dispel, part. you can dispel, and uh, Viper doesn't really deal well with, with all the illusions hitting him. Because mm -hmm, it's physical and he can only build into magic resistance. And actually, if you think about all the viable Viper builds, none of them really handle physical damage too well. It's always, oh, I can build some magic you know, resistance additionally, or I could give a some build, control. A build that would be really cool on him that was built a long time ago was that whale. Because you have a Jakiro as well in your team and the Chrono, it would be so cool, but he's not going to buy it. That item right now is way too expensive. It's like the recipe itself is a thousand one hundred, so it, you don't want to go for that. Yeah, it used to feel so. Uh, the previous Veil just felt so godly, actually. I even saw loads of offlaners picking up. Um, I know Zai was especially mm -hmm. just building it on every hero in his pub games mm -hmm. because he, I think he called it the new drums at the time. It was just that. Yeah, it was the. It was the Sand King meta, right? Every single Sand King off lane veil and you can't kill him anymore. 
you can see that uh, Limp uh, switched things up a, a bit on mid. He went for an early Nether Toxin. He isn't going for corrosive skin and poison stacks. So poison attack. So he's uh, kind of trying to alleviate the pain that comes from Riptide that way. Mm -hmm. I like it, especially considering how squishy these illusions are at the start. You've already seen the damage they just took. Even on the bot lane, this I, I don't feel like there's going to be much kill potential on either side, right? Because you know Weaver can always get away, and there's two bulky boys that can always scare off Solo. I think they can uh, take down Shaker if he overcommits, and LTW he definitely has a chance to trade well uh, with the Beastmaster. So, also there's a good Sentry yeah. planted by Shaker. And... I love that one right there. So they got Obs on one side, they got Sentry on the other, and you wouldn't really look here for that wood. Mm -hmm. Like you know, we see LT LTW's trying to figure it out. He's like, where the hell is this? Ah, you see that block? If it actually blocked him on the other side, he's dead. They would dish out a lot. Maybe not dead, but they would really get him low. There's definitely a hard potential to kill though, because Shikuchi at level one, 12 second cooldown is pretty rough. Yeah. Top lane as well. It's kind of similar situation in which, yeah, you have kill potential with uh, Void Spirit and Grimstroke, but Jakiro is very tanky, and Nico Baby just time lapses away. I mean, time walks away. That is. Yeah, it's it's a tough combo in that regard. I think like whenever I if I'm gonna voice for offlane, one of the worst supports to encounter, probably for any offlaner right now, actually, is Jakiro. Yeah. Actually, what do you prefer? If you had to choose to face a Bane or a Jakiro, which one is gonna annoy you more in that lane, in any lane really, on average? I'm not sure. Uh, they they are kind of the same. Your Jakiro's, Bane's, um, Undying's, and Augur's. It's the unholy. Quartet, I would call them. Like, those heroes you don't want to play against at any point in the game. See, what I like is that there's going to be a misguided soul, but because you said those four heroes are annoying to play against, they're going to advise, because Lizard said so, that, that they should pick all of them. Right? Then, yeah. you'll just win all your lanes. I mean, in some rank, I'm pretty sure that would work. <laughs> you know, just win all your lanes and that's it. How great must that feel? Just, like, like just... you've done coaching, right? Do you sometimes just get tempted to just tell them anything can work because you're like, well, if I played at that rank, I'd, I'd get the but, win. Get the dub. I, I don't even think it's that bad. I, I honestly believe anything can work in this game. It's yes. not about the rank. It's about how you play around it and how good you are with what you're playing. Sometimes the worst hero in the meta can be very good. Bottom lane has four. Gonna go down. There you go. They get the kill. LTW will live. Meanwhile, on the top lane, there is a little bit of a battle going on. Inkspell's gonna come out, but the bash is straight away. Nice time walk across by Nico, baby. But Rezo, he is fast enough to move away. Zayat's how he gets bashed once. No RNG. He used it all up on Rezo. What if he gets bashed once and then three more times, he's gonna die. Is that what you were, you were gonna say? Hey, don't give Grimstroke that much credit, okay? He's, he's a very, very small boy when he hasn't got his spells available. Actually, no one is uh, just farming the jungle. Yeah, he's not really playing against Viper and uh, Limp so far has out-leveled him and out-farmed him, yeah. Yeah, like you can immediately, all you have to do is look at that stat alone. The amount of denies he's got, no wonder then the no one Naga doesn't want to be on this lane. I think it's all about the Nether Toxin, right? I, he, it has to be. He started with level 1 Nether Toxin, which mm -hmm. prevented no one from rip-tiding anything. So he adapted to the lane really well when it comes to the skill build, and because of that, he's winning it. No, I, I agree. Like, these illusions, 350% damage taken. Like, there's no way you can... Even level 1 never talks it. You can't stand in it. Mm. As a result, we're going to get another possibly snowball -y Viper game. It's just a case of whether you can reset that, though, right? Which, I, I don't know about you. I'm not feeling 100% confident about support ganks towards the mid. It's not like you're the ones with a shaker that can easily cut him off. So maybe instead S4. you just have to play for the outer lanes, which is working well because S4 is going to fall again. Now they picked the Beastmaster into this Enchantress. He still went for the boars and Solo is just taking these little beasts and turning them against him. It's, it's definitely proven problematic. I mean, you haven't really got a support that is going to be present on your lane at all times either, right? Shaker is that type of support that wants to move around the map and away from the lane. 
Yeah, Shaker is also the reason why you know, he dies there because obviously Beastmaster does go out of position, but Hans can use that fissure very, very early. Oh, look at this. But maybe here. There you go. That's the way you use the fissure. They dive the tower, they'll look for the kill, and no one is going to tick out. And while that's happening, Grimstroke in the top lane does go down. So I love picks. how S4 rotates in as well. Level 4 Beast with a catapult. That's that's a ghost sign right there. Ench is on her way to try and steal one of those creeps back, but they need to be a little bit careful here. Nice stomp. Good control. They just need to get S4 out now, and there's the fissure. Beautifully done by Hanskin. That's a lot of damage onto the tier 1, despite them being repelled, though. It's really important for them as well to chuck at this tier 1 for as much as possible to take it down early. Because it will open up the map a lot and it will be easier to hunt down this Naga. But the response from Virtus Pro is also brilliant because they send Naga bottom and this Weaver that's had a really good lane and the bottle can now chill around mid lane, farm, probably uncontested, and then also take all the runes that spawn. Ooh, uh, well, Alliance are going to take someone else. They do find a kill on the solo. In the top lane, some pressure coming out. Nico maybe hasn't got six yet, so. Good luck killing Reza instead. Nico maybe oh. might go down himself. Oh, we said even time off the... was good. Yeah. But... <laughs> you have to use it. <laughs> I think you you also had stroke, stroke of fate, fate. missed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was missed. The it didn't matter. It was mind games. He's like, if you time walk right now, even though he couldn't because he was stunned. So, uh, you know what you call it? I say the just to be safe skill right like you know when you throw an arrow for to someone that they get stunned it's like just in case that person forgets to use their stun this arrow will hit <laughs> oh and oh, now level again. six yeah they don't have a chrono yet either not that you want to use it in this situation just rezo jumps in and gets a kill now nika maybe might want to be careful himself he has chrono but uh yeah, but how no you gonna damage kill with it yeah absolutely no damage weaver bottom lane handskin should be able to keep you out that's uh, that's kind of one of the easy points for them is there's not too much stun control on VP. Most of it is just in one lane, actually. Yeah. Limp got a really good neutral item as well on the mid lane. He's got the arcane ring. It's so good for Viper man, giving you that mana from intelligence and then the armor too. That's, that's... I actually love arcane ring as well overall. Oh, Many so heroes good. early on. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's probably like the best generic item. Bottom lane. Yeah. That's a dive and a half. Chasing on a hand. Yeah, that's with the, the dead shaker. Day. He's gone. He's only level three, right? So it's pretty pitiful. They're not. Yeah, they're not getting a lot out of it, but they're oh, oh, are delaying oh, him. Oh, the chrono does connect on the Zayats, but they were hoping for Rezo here. And Zayats. There's the bash they needed. He has the ink as well. That's too late. Yep. Uh, there was a chance to counterplay that, but because Beast is there and he has Roar, I think they decide not to. I was actually thinking maybe they they will ink swell the Void Spirit and then someone TPs. It. There's 100% chance of getting at least the Jakiro. They, they might, might get him something. anyway, though. Yeah, because Weaver is top now. But it looks like Alliance, they're going to play it Vigilant. They realize there's no one else shown on the map. Nobody else, rather, so... Who's back away? And I guess the most important thing for Alliance now is just trying to find space for Hanskin. I mean, you, you see, he's just trying to get the odd creep here and there on the bot lane, but it hurts. It's always the problem with Shaker. If you don't really win that off lane, suddenly your Shaker is stuck on a really long level trying to farm that blink. And he's far, far from it. If you remember yesterday, I think it was Bait when we were watching them have that Shaker. They gave him he mid, had... right? Yeah, he, they gave him mid and he already had like uh, 1,400 gold. Now, he did only go for brown boots. Ooh. Wow, this Shaker has Tranquilism. And this Shaker is nowhere near the fight that's occurring right now. FNG throws down the Ice Path. It does connect on the Void Spirit and Void Spirit will chase forward. S4 couldn't get the Prime Roar out though. Whereas they're quick to move away with the Astral Step. Meanwhile, they actually do find a decent target with that Shaker. LTW running away. He's going to tick down low, but he will not die. Now Viper has no control off. They still have a Primal Roar to play around here, so they're going to move forward. No Chrono for 50 seconds. They just want the Tier 1 Tar. We'll see if they can actually get it. I'm feeling like probably not. 
These stroke yeah. baits alone are slowing down any opportunity to push, but now they're going to go. It looks like BP wants them to have this. They've moved to the other side of the map. They don't have Chrono, right? But they're just so bulky with the Beastmaster and the Viper. They can frontline easily and they, they're not afraid of being, uh, I don't know, comboed by anything because at the moment there are no combos on the Virtus Pro and they're waiting for at least this Yasha on Naga, but I don't think even that's your power spike. <laughs> that sounds spike. underwhelming not, to me, Liz. Well, yeah, that's we'll, not really. We'll go when we have a Yash. Mm, okay, what's Rezo getting? Yeah. Let's think about that instead. He's getting Yules, so good for pickoffs. But it, right now, it feels like if Alliance wants to fight you five on five, you back away if you're VP. Mm. Yeah, you can you can play around as four. You can play with Rezo and Weaver, but that's it. Your Naga is AFK. Completely AFK. Uh, and I like the fact that Grimstroke didn't even level his ulti, by the way. He's level 7 without ulti. And it's something that you can really do in, in, in games in which you don't have any big combos. And in this game, he has well, no combos. He you can yeah, double he's... net or that's double about... enchant. Yeah, that's about <laughs> yeah. as good as it gets. <laughs> oh, you double yours. Beaver. There you go. Ah, he was about to time lapse after the chrono but there was one last bash just as the chrono ended well, rng works in nika baby's favor and alliance's move will seem favorable as they will be able to secure this tier one tower and you can already see the hands going to set up on the top in case bp try and get some chip damage at this tier two likely they'll just let him be in fact actually they won't hands can <sighs> you can see it. He's just like, I just want to hit creeps, bro. Come on. I've got 500 gold towards this blink. Now they, they really identified the weakness of Alliance right now. And that's this super underfarmed shaker that can't really even use the echo because he's level six and he doesn't have um, maxed out aftershock. It's only level two. He basically like once he has that blink, it is the game winning blink, right? Because you're against the Naga this weaver and this voice bro two squishy cores and one which has a stack of illusions to play it's the it's the reliable initiation that it brings to team mm -hmm. of alliance to, to alliance oh, right uh, uh, that, that's what it brings this it's happening again this is so good from vp they'll just move in and clean him up again they fire and forget and limp does arrive in time to get zayats but rezo gets away with it once more it's a good counter kill but it relieves the pressure as well. That's the problem. Suddenly your Viper is stuck on the tier two. And you can see these rotations from uh, Weaver and uh, Resolution. You Speak, see how they're going? Speaking of Weaver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like catch There's him. no Chrono though. That's the problem. He would, Look at the Sentry. He literally just got out of range of it. So they didn't have vision and now they need to run. Solo being brought down low. Limp puts down the brakes so you can actually hit and do him faster. And as a result, Solo will fall. But, I mean, you just use Prime Raw essentially to get an Enchantress and you still have to bring a lot of heroes here. Man, Break is so busted. Break is so good. Even versus Enchantress right there, you could see it. Uh, untouchable doesn't work, so they clean her up really easily. I thought that in that situation, Wirtz Pro might get a counter kill because they planned it. They force two rotations to top lane to help shake her, and then they collapse on the Beastmaster and Void. But they didn't get anything out of it, just the roar that was used, but... I don't think you're sad about that if you're Alliance at all. No, you'll have it again soon. It's just 40 seconds away. And when you do have it, you'll also have a Chrono available this time as that's five seconds out. And they do just do a smoke. As soon as the Chrono is available, you use it. That's how this draft works. Uh, remember the whale we talked about? Mm-hmm. It's, it's on there. Yeah. Yep. Wants to contribute some damage. Chrono's going to go down on, on the Weaver and they've got enough to kill him off. Perfect pick. The one that they actually wanted as well. I don't see those jokes you're talking about, by the way, but maybe <laughs> FNG will fall. Well, that's because Alliance were the ones doing the jukes when they were playing the Weaver. So, the problem is, you know, Nico Baby already knows how a Weaver does his juke. And S4, uh-oh, Boar is being used against them. He has got that Primal Roar, and they can fight this right now. Primal Roar is going to come out. Nico Baby doesn't actually want to help anymore, though. In fact, he, so he just needs to what? leave. Why are they not going for Void there? They were very passive. Now, okay, there is a tier, it's tier 2, not even a tier 1. A but... song. Yeah, I'm actually surprised they didn't go for the Void because they know he has no Chrono. He used mm -hmm. it earlier on the Weaver 
And, and you haven't snare. Right? Not just that. So. Also, they know there's no that the full force is there. Look at Hanskin, who is now going to die top. So I guess they just saw more value in making Hanskin's life even sadder. But they knew Shaker was top the entire time, so they knew they always had number advantage. In yeah, that I, I really think they had. I really think they had an opportunity there to try and make a kill on Void, but they probably know better though. They also see the that Viper is missing, so he could have been right there. And if you try and commit too hard. Uh, you might get counter killed, so you know better safe than sorry, especially when you're playing the Naga Siren. Most definitely. I mean, that's that's the thing for VP. If they can get this late enough. Yeah, you're up against the faceless void, but when you get those hyper late game fights, you know Chrono is a big cooldown, but Naga keeps on doing what Naga does best. You're gonna have a lot of defusals as well. One on Weaver about to be completed. Same goes for Naga. After the Manta, it's his next item. Yours. To Kira, caught, but they don't have the damage. Double headed dragon is quite tanky, and Nico baby moving forward, but no one's gonna be found. Or is it S4 being found? He has got the primer raw, but they need at least three heroes to kill off this Naga. 30 seconds for the chrono, so it's quite far away. Exactly, and this is a bit of a dicey chase, right? Like that's another thing for Alliance. Your catch is meant to be Hanskin, and he is not participating in the He's last chilling. few fights. Just give him some time, man. Where's the rush? It's only 17 minutes. He's died a couple of times. Let him farm the jungle a bit. He'll, he'll, he'll get there. That's true. The, the jungle is probably a better place for him to be. There's less chance that VP heroes just run at you straight away. Whereas so far, the game has felt like they see Hanskin hit a single creep in the lane top. They scream Hanskin's name and then run toward the top. Well, no uh, one is actually screaming his or him. singing his name. Yeah. Can he echo this? I, there's Maybe no room for Yeah. That's the thing. I don't I'm think surprised. they had TP. Actually, they did have TPs available. Of course they did. They're 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 not playing in your rank, dude. Everyone has TPs here. Liz, don't give me that shtick. I know they do it in your pub games as well. Okay. <laughs> I know I don't have TPs, Liz. So <laughs> you like one fine. more creep, buddy. One more creep. Push on the bot lane. And there won't be a reflective movement on the top. Although VP heroes are nearby and the Sans comes out to Hanskin. So there it is. Inkswell chasing. The TP is already happening and they'll back away. They have forced FNG here, but they're not in position to make a move on the other side of the map. Yeah, this was really telegraphed. They, uh, Hanskin should know 100% that they want his uh, death as soon as possible so that they can delay that dagger a bit longer. But I think Wrist Pro should chill. They'll understand that they can't take him anymore. Solo just doing solo things. It's okay. I mean, well, it's not okay. It gives a, a decent chunk of change compared to the POS 5 on the side of Alliance. If he went for a medallion. I would be surprised if he didn't go for Force next. I think it's a really solid item this game. Just to help out versus, uh, versus the Nether Toxin. You could go for something like a Solar Crest or a Glimmer as well to help you out versus all the magic damage and, and the chrono. That's also an option. No, no. I, I think four stuff just seems like the best, right? Because then you can save whoever's in the never toxin. You've got mobile heroes that don't want to get stuck in there. Rezo is lurking around bot. S4 was looking for him, but it looks like he's just going to keep cutting these waves so they can't push in hard on the bot lane, which is obviously oh, what Beastmaster a, wants to do. Uh, that's such a good tier 2 item. And they just got a net. Clumsy net again. So you have the ensnare from the Naga, now you have the clumsy net too. That's true. We did mention the lockdown, how it's, you know, limited in terms of which heroes have it. So Eng can contribute more to the fights now. Uh, there might be a fight happening bot soon though. The heroes are starting to rally around, around this bot area. It seems like Nika Baby's just been content to farm in the meantime. Feeling confident about how we'll match up against the Naga if they continue at this rate. I mean, Void is scary. Uh, later on in the game you can be as tanky as you want but he's going to chrono you for a really long time and also he's going for Mjolnir I was thinking maybe he'll go for Axe this game I have seen a lot of oh, oh mid lane they're going for Nika baby the BKB gets forced out straight away the Soulbind is only onto him and no one is close enough because Limp can stay out of range Zayas will be brought down Rezo we chased on two next they've got the roar but they don't have the range right now Hanskin has the blink however and that will give them the range they need. Okay, they'll save the Primer Roar. Nico Baby does not hesitate to throw out that Chrono for a kill to Rezo who's on the kill streak. It's a good kill. 
It's a good kill. You know how elusive Void Spirit is, so using that uh, Chrono on him is definitely fine. Also, the first BKB has been used by Nico Baby. Mid lane. Uh, that's, that's the defusal reveal. Limp is feeling the pain right now. Uh, that's the second defusal. Uh, ooh. Limp's like they fine. Still have the I don't roar. need my mana. They still have the roar, but no one. He plays a bit of Sing Star on the weekends. He knows how to get out of this one. However, he, oh, Hanskin, okay, he, he doesn't want to go. He did have the blink ready. I think the other thing to highlight also is the Alliance map mid lane. That was kind of optimal situation because they did actually scan out VP's smoke when they were trying to get in. Hmm. The question is, when are we looking towards Roche in this game? Because now Song is down. You've got Echo Slam. Maybe if you're Alliance, you could go get yourself a second life. Both of these teams do Roche really well. Um... I don't see a clear favorite, and there's the tornado. I think that was, who was it? Was it Enchantress or Beast? That was Beasts, yeah. Beasts has still got that rule, but so far VP. I mean, they're ducking and diving. They're doing a good job of staying away. And they have to against this Shaker with the blink now. You need to be careful though, because S4 he's on a hunt and he sees them with the hawk. Yeah, and Hanskin, he's got that blink. Like this is the thing, the vision in conjunction with the Shaker's initiation potential was good. And Zaz to be brought down. Soulbind's going to be there. They need to be careful though. Hanskin is waiting for his opportunity to jump right now. No one will chase him. There's the Echo Slam on the illusions. Well done. Half HP already. The BKB gets side by Nico Baby moves in. He'll look for the kill. The buyback comes out on the Grimstroke. They've already lost both the Daga and the Void Spirit. And that won't be all they'll lose. Solo is going to be brought down. The rest of VP do retreat. And that is going to be the pit secured by the side of a line. Nice. Straight into the pit, you have a lot of utility that S4 brings there, you have the Nether Toxin, the damage really is not lacking. And the most important part is you're not afraid of anything that uh, Weird Stroke can come with. Weaver might try to steal it to Sukuchi, but I think that's probably not gonna happen. I, I think so, if you do that, you die, Liz. Yeah, 100%. Also, I'm surprised. Uh, they decided to fight there because you know there's a hawk on top of you so that vision is very beneficial for alliance and you don't have song so if they go on the naga she just dies and they did see the shaker he was sitting in vision mm -hmm. I, I think the other thing to highlight about that right is like vp identifies shaker's problem they're all so split up but we see the weakness of naga against that shaker right it's like you create your own problem of all these illusions as soon as you summon I just see a lot of problems on the side of VP. Um, their catch is very limited. Their stuns are very expensive. What are their stuns, actually? I, you they have, have Inkswell, Aether Remnant. Aether Neither Remnant. of these are yeah, reliable so far. That's not reliable, especially the Inkswell, because it's purgeable, and you can purge it with uh, Beastmasters, Necros every time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and yeah, you do have the clumsy net and you've got this yules that can set up the Aether Remnant but it, it's nothing compared to a Primal Roar or a Chrono or even an Ice Buff. Yeah, I'm just seeing a lot of issues. It's not even uh, the disables themselves. It's the damage mm -hmm. from the side of Earth's Pro. It's very lackluster. Like, y your Naga has Manta Diffusal. That's fine. But she needs a BKB because of the break and your Weaver is also going for a BKB. And that item doesn't truly really help you that much versus the Roar and the Chrono. And no. it's not going to give you some big power spike that's going to enable you to just destroy them. However, truth be told, it does help a lot versus Shaker. That's true. But you're right about the damage side of things, right? This double diffuse. It's not like you're playing against this Lushrak or some of your huge mana pool. We saw it on Limp, right? When both diffusal carriers melted his mana pool, he still had like a quarter of his life and they knew they couldn't finish it. Now Alliance... They're going to look to finish the builds. They do have to move up to the high ground temporarily. They've got the Chrono to play with, so... They don't even have to feel that threatened here. And you already see VP. They're just splitting the map. LTW pushing top. No one farming the Dire Jungle. And Limp just role-playing a machine gun right now. Yeah, and he hits so hard with this Viper. He has the talent for 100 attack range. This Ooh. solo might be dead. Yep. Will he die solo, though? Ooh, Nico baby. He's just baiting. He's toying with him. He, yeah, he wasn't gonna chrono there. It's just a, it's just a bait. No, because if you chrono and they have buybacks, then all of a sudden you have to leave. If you do this instead, they always remember that you have chrono. 
Oh, he wants to catch him kill on his eyes. He actually needs to be careful. The Inkswell might hit him up, but oh, there it is. Limp with the kill secure. Uh, one good thing that no one has done, he creep skipped pretty much every lane, so they don't have any more creeps to work with. They barely even got this uh, side of Raxes, or at least the melee. Um, so no one did a pretty good job uh, creep skipping here and delaying the Excellent. game a little bit. Primer are out, Macrify down. They can stun follow up on the Weaver, and there it is. The Echo Slam jumping. They scorch a bug on this night, and the night will feel long for VP because, as you said, he has bought some of that creep bush in. But they do have plenty of time left on that Aegis, about a minute and a half. They're, they're severely missing a big frontlining hero on the side of VP. Someone that can just jump in and Something do like this that maybe, Solo is doing. Yeah. Someone like maybe Centaur, dying. right? I, I mean, yeah. if only this team was known for picking Centaur, it, it, it could have relieved some of the problems. So Rezo can fit that role as well, but he's a bit under farm. And he's not really your hero that is going to soak in all the damage. He's just a hero that's going to go in and create some chaos, right? But the follow-up is also very minimal. Um, the more this game goes on, the more apparent the flaws of the draft come, just become. But uh, yeah, maybe if you buy enough time. Naga has the BKB. Weaver has it as well. You have two 10 seconds BKB. It's, it's pretty much now or never. You're... You really need to take a good fight. That moment where the Aether Remnant somehow hits the creep behind Void is a painful moment. Maybe yeah, you can burn just... down BKB Chrono straight away without hesitation. In on the Naga Siren and no one being bashed up. She's going to be brought down dead for 50 seconds. No buyback. And they will realize that very quickly. Because he that did buy Aegis out the new item. About to run out. The Aegis mm -hmm. will run out in 10 seconds. They timed that so perfectly well on the side of alliance hey, this is keys to the base you know this is going to be a second lane of course the other lanes protected by tier two okay might be keys to more at this rate we've just brought down the prime removal haven't been thrown out rezo trying to move away but that's all your spells use the time dilation hurts him a little bit but he's still got cooldowns even when he gets rid of it he's gone zayat they're like kill off the kill wherever we go we find something to murder <laughs> and they'll go back well played is it the gig case. And Hans can right now when he whacks someone with that totem, he's like Nyeh! every single time because they killed him so many times in that lane. Like I think he died five times before he got four or five times before he got his blink dagger. They really had a hard on just killing him constantly and delaying it, and he must feel really good after this victory. Um yeah, you you really can see the flaws of this draft. Viper, I think, unlocked everything for Alliance, but just the fact that you have heroes that actually can stun people for an extended period of time, you know, it allows you to get these skills, even on Naga, even on a Weaver. And that BKB was pretty much a passive BKB on both of them because I'm pretty sure the game ended with both of them having a 10-second one. The yeah. moment Naga bought it, yeah, she got chrono. Same goes for Weaver. He got it. He gets uh, ice patted, fissure ice pat into enchant totem, and he dies. So, not only was the draft the problem, I also think the itemization a little bit wasn't really on point. Maybe if you just try to beef up, that would be better. But I really think their biggest issue was this Viper with Nether Toxin, which forces uh, forces them to play a different game. And then you have to worry about the Shaker, about the Ice Pad, BKBs. You have to get them, but... You don't feel good about it, right? It's like in you a game really where want you them, build yeah. a Lincoln. You're like, well, I need this to survive, but this isn't doing much else. It's not going to win you the game. Yeah, no. it's not going to win you the game. That's the thing. And it's like the way that these heroes had to build as well, right? Like you've got these Diffus because we already highlighted like, Burst Pro kind of lack lockdown. You look at the build that Rezo has to go for, right? This Yule's into Ags, which the Ags, by the time he's getting it, there's a BKB on Nico, baby. There's no easy target anymore, you know? And you need utility yeah. at that point. I think you highlighted it, right? Who's frontliner? It's not like you've got an offliner building Crimson Garden Pipe in this game. Everyone's and just trying to catch. The, exactly, and they're all kind of similar, right? right? You have this uh, Void Spirit, and you have the Weaver, and they're very mobile, they're very elusive. But none of them can really stand and fight so that one of them can do the damage. They're all trying to bait out the chrono and run away. I think it comes down to the ease of execution and the lion's 
had a much, much easier drive to play. Most definitely. And the Lions end up making this series look pretty easy. And it needed to as well. Mm. That's going to actually give them some much needed points as Alliance before this was sitting at only three points. This is their final game played. They are up to six points. There is a slight dilemma. They're kind of at a stage where they're reliant on the outcomes of other teams. Of course, Virtus Pro being off to this start means that they remain at zero points. We'll see if they can actually add to their score with a second series at the end of the day. But before we get to that, we actually are going to have some EU action. You know, we had some EU versus CIS. Next up, it's EU versus EU because in about, I reckon, 20 minutes, we are on a rolling schedule here. We're going to have OG versus Viking. And OG, they would love another win. They actually haven't been beaten overall in any series. They've only dropped two games total so far of a free series. And Viking, they're sitting 2 1 on the overall scores with seven points apiece. Let's see who's going to get ahead here. You know, whoever does probably is going to secure one of those top spots at this rate. All we know is that I'm going to throw a break at your face now. And um, when we return, after, you know, sipping on some Monster and revitalizing our fuel, we'll be back with series number two.